This is not a ride sharing video. I repeat, this is not a ride sharing video. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Just wanted to come on and talk to the folks. Um, as you can see, I'm obviously outdoors, out here on the river, out actually riding my bike. So I just wanted to come talk to the folks because yesterday, uh, Trump spoke. Trump spoke at CPAC. So I wanted to ask you folks, real quick, let me know if you can hear me. Can you guys type in the comments if you can um, if you can hear me so I can make sure. Because I'm on Bluetooth or something like that. Why the helmet? Uh, as you can see behind me, I have a e-bike that I'm riding. And I'm, you know, I grew up in an era where people didn't wear helmets. You know, a man's man. But these e-bikes do 30 miles an hour. And, you know... I had my, my brother was riding a regular Honda motor scooter a few years back and he fell off of that damn thing at about 30 miles an hour and just really ripped the skin, you know, road rash. And when you dark as hell like me, road rash makes you look like you're about as pink as a vagina. So now I actually do wear some gear. I mean, the, the bike is not slow. I mean, like I said, it will do about 30 miles an hour. So, and I'm an old man. I'm not going to heal tomorrow. You think I'm going to get back up if I fall off of that bike? Shit, I'm going to be hurting. I've actually considered buying knee pads and shit like that. So, <laughs> I'm an old man, but it is what it is. Um, looking in the comments, someone says, we are Iowa for weenies. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you're talking about my Hawkeye jacket, but... Anyhow, I'm just wearing it because it does break the wind. I mean, you get up to 25, 30 miles an hour, and it's only about 40 degrees here today, so it's not a warm day. In fact, I'm riding with gloves on. So, anyhow, I want to talk to you folks about CPAC. As you see in the, the title of the video, has the Republican Party maintained its integrity, or do you see the Republican Party now as the Trump Party? Because at CPAC, which is generally where the next candidates can, you know, state their claim to take down, you know, the incumbent Democrat, most of the major players in the game were not there. Ron DeSantis did not attend. Vice President Mike Pence, even though his president is actually running for the position, Mike Pence was not at CPAC. In addition, the crowd size, you hear Trump, President Trump is known for talking about crowd size. The crowd size was nowhere near what it normally is at CPAC, certainly not for President Trump's 2016 or 2020 run. So what's happened? Has Trump taken over the Republican Party or is the, Repu the integrity of the Republican Party still the same? That's what I want to talk to you folks about. Looking in the comments, um, uh, what is it? Limoncello says, Pence says he won't vote for Trump. I didn't hear that. I know Pence has stated that the party could use someone else going forward, but outright denouncing any vote for President Trump, I have not heard of that. Are you serious? I honestly think Republicans need to run on their own words and not Trump's agenda. But can any... Republican candidate doing what you advised have a real chance at winning. If you have a Republican candidate running on Republican values, which some of those clash with the values of President Trump, can they win? Can they get the can they get the party behind them? Because I believe there's about 30 percent of Republicans that are MAGA no matter what. So what can you do about that? By the way, folks, tap the screen. Get your boy up to 5,000 likes, as I always say. Regardless of where I'm at or when I'm doing this, all of my shows will always remain MAGA-friendly. My pr preferred guests are MAGA. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome, too. You know what I say on every broadcast. I don't ban, censor, or block anyone for their commentary. So come on in the box. I'll give you plenty of time to state your case without any fear of censorship. But I want to know... Has the Republican Party been hijacked by President Trump? But even if you believe it is, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Do you believe maybe Trump's vision for America is actually better than the original Republican vision for this country? Uh, looking in the comments, what are you writing? Uh, behind me, I have a 
what do you call it? Uh, it's an e-bike. It's electric XP 2.0 e-bike. So there you go. It has three or four inch wide tires. It does like 30 miles an hour or some shit like that. So it's a, it's a good bike. Uh, looking in the comment. Democrats are evil with zero morals. King Hassan. You don't think Democrats have any morals at all? So I guess I would have to ask you the question. When Trump was on video back in the 80s suggesting that he identifies as a Democrat, are you saying that Trump used to be void of morals? Let your boy know. I'd love to have you uh, come on. Let me go ahead and move straight to the box. We'll start out with the one and only Shay. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. I'm just happy to be doing it on a Saturday. Good afternoon. Hello, hello. How are you, Tim? I'm doing all right. Chilling, as they would say. So what do you think? You think Trump has hijacked the party? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think in some way, I, I don't think he's hijacked it. I think he's taken it constant. Well, I guess it's hijacking. Um, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, in that term, yes, I think he has. Because here's the problem that they're getting themselves into. You look at Pence, right? Pence will right. not go... To, you know, do the subpoena. Why? He has admittedly outright said that Trump is dangerous for the office, basically, that he should never be president again, that the Republican Party could do better. So Pence, then go nuke the dude. Like, then, then this is your only chance to save the Republican Party if you go and do what you should do, your patriotic duty, and answer the questions. And so that's yeah, you know, the problem so that they I, have. I, uh, yeah. So, so at the end of the day, does the Republican Party have any chance of putting up any candidate other than Trump? Or should we just automatically assume at this point Trump will be the nominee? It's a really good question. I think if the San listen, I, 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 I kind of feel for my Republican friends because they're kind of screwed because they want DeSantis over Trump. A majority of them, I think, would would prefer that you think that, wait 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 you really believe that most you, well maybe your friends but what about the party as a whole do you really believe they would prefer DeSantis over trump i i yeah i mean i i obviously i think he's kept a hold of a good 20 percent of the republican party for sure as his tight base it would prefer to have him but when the evangelicals have left you i mean the evangelicals have left trump uh, he doesn't. Is that really for, have, are you for real? Well, wait, oh, wait, yeah. wait a minute. You think the event? You think the because think about it. They Regardless have. of how you and I may feel about Trump coming from the left, Trump has given the evangelical something they've been fighting for for fifty years, and that is their belief that they should be protecting the life of the unborn. Why would they abandon Trump? Nobody else has been able to give them that. Well, that, that according to a lot of evangelical leaders, they have said that they have they are not going to support Trump moving forward. So, and I think I a lot of it that. is... That's crazy. Is, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he gave them the Supreme Court that they wanted, but now it's like they understand that he's also not uh, pushing the religious agenda. He keeps uh, he keeps attacking uh, a lot of Republicans, so that's yeah. not good for the party. Um, I, I think that they look at him. They can no longer make excuses. I guess now that they got Roe v. Wade turned over, they can no longer make excuses for this man, right? And then, I mean, yeah, I don't, you don't know, talk about him. Yeah, I mean, being being on the left, obviously, I don't necessarily, you know, fall in line with supporting Trump. Nevertheless, if I was evangelical, I can't see how I would abandon Trump. I mean, he's giving you, you now have six Republican Supreme Court justices, which will probably be around for most of the rest of our lifetime. Like right. I said, they roll back Roe v. Wade. And the fight against LGBT, the LGBT community, is stronger than ever. Now, these are things that the, the, the evangelical base wholeheartedly supports. This stuff has gained some significant momentum under Trump, yet you want to go with somebody else? Yeah, because, I mean, DeSantis is pushing all of that in Florida. So I think they would prefer DeSantis. Yeah. I mean, he really rides more of the conservative line, honestly. Everybody knows Donald Trump is not a conservative. Everybody knows that. He's not a Christian. Everybody knows that. So why not go with a candidate that actually claims to be a Christian, actually acts very conservative, actually pushes the religious agenda against the LGBT IA community, what, et cetera, et cetera. What about, what about the notion that there would be no dissenters without Trump? Because you're saying folks would rather have Trump or DeSantis, rather, but without Trump, would DeSantis even be at the position he's in? Uh, 
I, I well, I mean, to the point, I think this is a playbook for sure. He's figured out how it works for everybody. He figures out the tactics everybody's looking for. So, yeah, I, I think definitely San Francisco is learning from Trump. But I don't yeah. feel that Trump has ever been good for the San Francisco, to be honest. No. I don't know. I- I don't know. I gotta. I gotta say. I, even though, like I say, even though I'm not a Trump supporter, I gotta differ with you on that. If I was an evangelical on the, the right side of the aisle, I would probably be saying exactly what Macklin said, which is, yeah, he talks a bunch of shit that he, and he, you know, he's rough around the edges. But in terms of getting what you want out of a candidate, as an evangelical, I can't see the Senate's providing as much as Trump has. I think for the folks who are in that category, wow, I'd have a hard time telling them that, you know, DeSantis or Cruz or Pence or any of these other folks are better at what you want than Trump is. But maybe maybe you and I differ on I, that. I, but Tim, I think they're tired of, I think they're tired of the, the, the crap, right? They're tired of the, the narcissism. They're tired of the no unity they're tired everybody's tired every republican i talk to they want unity they really do now there's some extremes on the left and the right that don't want unity but there's a lot of republicans that i talk to uh, on a daily basis that say i don't know why we can't you know the media is tearing us apart why can't we come and solve these problems who wants trump no he would never speak on unity ever he would never but but even trump even Trump claims he wants unity. I think some of those folks may be just giving it lip service. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I don't know about that. I don't either. I mean, you listen to his right. CPAC speech, right? I mean, come on. This guy no. is so well, much we, more we, yeah, yeah, we know it's Trump so himself does not want. We Yeah, we know Trump doesn't want no. unity, but I don't think his no. supporters are really concerned with that. But Shay, you know what I got to do. Yeah, gotcha. coming in here. All right. Good talk. Good talking to you. All right. Bye, everybody. Ab- absolutely. Anytime, anytime. All right, folks, as always, tap the screen. Get your boy up to 10,000 likes. As always, the show is and will forever remain MAGA friendly. MAGA are my preferred guests. And nevertheless, liberals are welcome as well. In the comments, I don't know one Trump supporter who is leaving him. They are pushing DeSantis. Um, that's coming from somewhere in the, I can't pronounce it. In regards to not knowing one Trump supporter that's leaving him, while I strongly agree that Trump's base is fairly strong, the idea that none of none of his supporters have left him is wrong. I, there's no way I could believe that. I mean, obviously Mike Pence used to be MAGA at one point. There's a host of Republicans that used to be MAGA at one point that are not supporting Trump. Many of them are folks that he hired and fired. So if you do not see any Trump supporters that have left him, maybe you're in a more deeper MAGA circle. But make no mistake about it. Think about all of the folks that are saying they want the Senate as opposed to MAGA or as opposed to Trump. All of them were MAGA a few years ago. Virtually everyone that is saying that the Senate would be the next best thing going forward were MAGA at one point. So how could you not see Trump losing any supporters at all? I'm not saying his base is gone, but he certainly lost some supporters. Um, going to the box, it is Kiss My Grits. I saw you holding there first. Good afternoon, Kiss My Grits. By the way, folks, yeah, get your words to 10,000, tap the screen. Kiss my grits. Welcome back. Hey, did you see the video? No, I haven't got to it yet. I know I'm going to probably owe you an apology, but I've been so busy running around. I haven't got to it yet. Okay, please do. I, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I know you, you're you telling me you countered. You have a victorious counter of our conversation. I will check it out. And like I always say, if, if I'm wrong, I will concede the point and give you that apology. I just haven't gotten a chance to check it out yet. So in regards to this topic, though, do you believe that President Trump has hijacked the Republican Party? Made it no, the Trump hijack, Party, of no. course. No, hijacked, no. Okay. Um, I, I don't see where we're uh, evangelicalist or however she, she said it. Is leaving the Trump, you know, leaving that uh, mega party because he's done nothing but help them, you know. But what about what about the what 
what about the idea which she pointed <coughs> out where Trump has attacked Trump has attacked a lot of well-known, well-respected Republicans and they may be tired of the division. Is there any possibility of that? Uh, are you talking about the rhinos like Liz Cheney and all of them? Okay. What about Mike okay. Pence? Do you see well, Mike Pence? Come on what now. about Mike Pence? What about Mike Pence? Pence? Do you see him as a rhino? People never liked Pence while he was while he was in Indiana. People really? didn't like Pence. That was that was Trump's call. choice for for him being vice president. He wasn't chosen. Then why by they all the saying people. they didn't like him? Why were they not saying they didn't like him when Trump was dragged? When when Trump had Fauci on TV, they made no no doubt, no qualms about it. They did not like Fauci, no matter how much Trump put him on TV. When Trump was dragging Mike Pence around, I didn't hear anything from MAGA suggesting he didn't like Pence. Oh, yeah, there was. You just it was didn't very hear quiet. closely. Yeah, right. Oh, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> because, because Pence um, conspired with another politician to try and get Trump unalived while he was on a train a plane trip where did you hear this this was in a this was in the email that got hacked this sounds like something straight out of 1930s Germany <laughs> wait you nope. say <laughs> you're saying there was some type of plot to get rid of Trump by Pence himself yep you need to send me a second email I'll tell you that. I need to see that. <laughs> you need to send me some more okay, information. Okay, I, I can need do to that see. too. Wow. I could do that too. Wow. Oh, okay, so let me ask you this then. What happened to Trump's promise <laughs> that he would surround himself by the best and brightest? You're telling me he's surrounding himself by assassins. You know what? Not what everybody. What the hell happened? I mean, people, people, people don't unveil themselves until way later. Well, what about properly vetting people? Why are you hiring so many people you, that are turning wait, out to be monsters and now you're talking about assassins? Hang on, hang on. You can vet somebody and they won't they won't reveal themselves. Okay. All of these people? Unless 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 they have a criminal background. Okay? Then yeah. Don't have them in your circle. But if you, right. see see my motto is you keep your enemies close, you keep your friends closer, because you know your enemy's going to try and hurt you one way or the other. Your friends, on the other hand, they will stab you in the back in a heartbeat. Damn. So let me ask you, do you believe that President Trump in 2024 is the best choice going forward? I think right now on how this, this how we're going into to the war and stuff like that with Ukraine, which, by the way, did you uh, see that there was a lot of people that went to to uh, D.C. to express their yeah. feelings? I heard about that. Yeah, they were that are not happy with what's going on in Ukraine. But I do believe that in this country, if you polled every everybody, I'm talking right and left, I do believe there's far more support for helping Ukraine than not. In fact, I will tell you this. Right now, and that's the reason why I'm asking this video about Trump potentially hijacking the party. In America, I do believe the big parties are Democrats, Republicans, and folks who support Trump. And when you look at the Democrats and Republicans, the, the idea that we should be helping the Ukraine seems to be bipartisan. For the most part, people complaining about helping the Ukraine are MAGA. You don't hear many regular traditional Republicans that do oh, not no, like Trump. Oh, there's a lot of Democrats, too. There's a lot of Democrats not not supporting it too, because yeah, they're tired. They're behind that. No, no, no. They're tired of all the money going over there when things here needs to be helped, needs to be done. Let me ask you something. So, if let's let's say for instance Biden did not send another penny to Ukraine, what difference do you think you would see in your life if we stopped sending that money it's, there and kept it well, here? No, 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 what no, do you no. think see, they would do? See, it's not about. Yes, it's partly about the money, but it's also partly about the corruption. And it's a partly about the U.S. government has uh, control over another country's um, decision on if they're going to push forward or not. NATO is not a good thing. Okay, and when NATO is pushing war with with Russia and Ukraine. Do you think we Ukraine, should get out of NATO? Do you think we should get I out of NATO? I think we need to get out of, Ukraine, uh, out of NATO, yes. Do you... 
I, 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 I saw this on, um, I think it was on Bill Maher the other day. Let, let me ask you something. To, what is NATO doing for us? What is NATO it's, doing it's, for us? Well, first of all, they give us additional bases and re places to be. Like, for instance, with China being a problem. If China turns into a problem, thanks to NATO, we have bases and, and equipment and assets all around China. We need those NATO member states, if only to launch a springboard into these other countries. <laughs> NATO hasn't right now, if we, if we get out, they ain't if, even if, paying if, their fair share. Okay, we've been paying the fair share. For, we're, we're paying more than what our share is into this. We need and to stop that. we're getting more out of it. We're, we're paying more. But we're also getting more what out, of it, out of it than all the other men. out of it? The fact that we are able to police the world for the most part unimpeded. Why should if there we was be not... the police? Why because should we be the police of the world? Because we, we are be reaping all the, the rewards. Because we are reaping. There's a reason why you pay less for gas in America than any other country. We're reaping all the rewards is why we're, we're like in charge what? of NATO. See if we if we start you. drilling if we start drilling in the Gulf like we should be instead of shutting all the Gulf down, okay, from drilling, we'd be number one. Well, that's debatable, but I, all right, fair enough. I do got to move it on though. Uh, kiss my girl. Send me that second email. I got obviously I got some reading to do from you. Well, I I mean the video I sent it to you on your your page here. I couldn't find your email address, so uh, I don't know why it was. It was on my bio. They took it down for some. I, I had to put it back up, but I, my email address used to be right here on the front of the page. So put it. Yeah, send it. Send it here to me, and I'll certainly look for it the minute I get done with this ride. Well, this, this is a so. photo. These are photos of uh, his emails talking to this person. So I got to send I'll it take, to, it, to an actual it. email matter. address. All right, I'll take a look at it, and I'll send you my email address as well. Catch you on the next one. I got to move All on. All right, thanks. All guys. right, absolutely. Okay, looking in the comments, I don't think there's one Democrat. I'm assuming that you say it's got any sense. I'm assuming you're saying you don't think there's one Democrat that has any sense. Ice Holland, 765. Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing that I told last, last uh, commentator that said something similar. Trump identified as a Democrat most of his adult life. Are you suggesting that when he did, he didn't have any sense? Think about that. Uh, so I want to want to present that to you while you're telling me you don't think any Democrats have any sense. Um, U.S. pays more in the NATO than any other nation, and we get the least amount of benefits. Says eight six seven. I definitely disagree that we get the least amount of benefits. For the most part, most other countries, when they want to do something on the world stage, they need the permission of the United States. So I, I don't know if I would agree that we get the least benefits. All right, we'll keep it moving. True story, he was a Democrat with common sense, okay? <laughs> so Trump was the only Democrat with common sense. All right. No, there is a reason he switched. Uh, says uh, nobody, nobody here. So what, So you are in, willing to admit there is one instance of a genuine party switch when it comes to Trump. Okay, let me keep it going. Going back to the box as always. Tap the screen, get your boy up to 15,000 likes. This program is and always will remain MAGA friendly. MAGA are my preferred guests. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome as well. Let's keep it going with uh, out of the matrix that I saw in the queue there. Uh, it actually got a little cooler out here. Okay, there we go. Out of the matrix. Good afternoon. What's going on, man? How you doing today? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm trying to. We're, we're, we're actually hashing around the possibility that Trump may have hijacked the Republican Party. Is that something that's out of liberal fantasies, or is there some possible legitimacy, legitimacy to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, he got 60 percent of the straw poll at CPAC, so I'd say he's he's uh, definitely in charge of the Republican Party for the foreseeable future. Yeah, but it's the difference between being a desired leader as opposed to hijacking the party. And what I mean by hijacking the party, for instance, is it possible to criticize President Trump or any of his policies and remain a respected Republican? There, there is, um, but when you have, like, when you have politicians who have spotty histories or show signs of uh, you know, being corrupt, it's hard to take the 
criticism of Donald Trump seriously. Uh, and, and that's what was for the, the Democrat. Okay, well, you, she had, you, said, she had, you said there is. Give me, give me an example of a Republican politician that is openly critical of Trump that still has the trust and the adner, adoration of Republicans or MAGA. Give me somebody that can criticize Trump and MAGA still respects them. Um, I would say probably like uh, the most recent one that I can think of, Jim Jordan, um, Lindsey Graham has been with him and still gets a lot of support um, okay. in South Carolina. Breaking up a little bit, but Lindsey, well, Lindsey, Graham Lindsey. Is, Lindsey Graham is called a rhino all day, every day on my program. I don't know about him having to, I, I guess for MAGA folks, in the, MAGA folks that happen to be watching the program, what is your opinion of Lindsey Graham? How many of you folks think he's a respected Republican versus a rhino? Because I don't hear that, what you're saying in regards to Lindsey Graham. Yeah, I mean, I, I you get people like your last guest that make it real hard to say who's Donald Trump, but, uh, you know, people can get on here and they just say crazy to pull back conspiracies, and they just don't have to support the same person we do, and then we all get lumped into a bucket with those guys and called radical, crazy conspiracy theorists, and that's just not the case. Yeah, and I'm looking in the comment section. There's not a lot of tolerance for Lindsey Graham in the comment section, and I don't see anybody in here that's really saying that they are um, big, you know. And I'm tra- and most and my, most of my audience leans right. And like I said, you, you, the, the idea that you're suggesting that Lindsey Graham, while being critical of President Trump, is still a respected Republican among MAGA, I'm not seeing that. And that's what I said. I don't know any. Republican that has been openly critical of Trump that still has the respect of MAGA. I, my opinion is once you criticize Trump, you're you're a traitor. You're out of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's certain segments of the MAGA movement, like your last guest, who probably feel that way and would espouse that. But I still have respect for Lindsey Graham. I live in his state, and he does a lot of good here. So, uh, what about Mike Pence? How do you feel about Mike Pence? To be completely honest, I was never a fan of him. I think he's very well spoken, mild mannered. He's very uh, typical of what you would expect for somebody as a presidential candidate, in regards to how he conducts himself. Uh, but I've never been a fan of him. I've never known him to do anything or have any great accomplishment that would warrant my support to the level of my support is Donald Trump, who did in fact do a lot of good for everyone in this country. So, um, you know, I don't have anything against him. I'm not going to say. Anything. I wouldn't call him a rhino or, or anything ridiculous like that, but he's never done anything to warrant more of my support than Donald Trump. What a, okay, last one. What about Mitch McConnell, the former Senate Majority Leader, now Senate Minority Leader? Mitch McConnell, how do you feel about him? I think he's a scumbag. I, I have as just much <laughs> I, I, I have as much disdain for him as I do Nancy Pelosi. My di- my distaste for him is even with Nancy Pelosi. Why? The man is who, okay, let me give you just like what I talked about in regards to folks talking about Trump losing evangelicals. When it comes to Mitch McConnell, I don't understand why there's so much MAGA dislike for the man. Not only did he block Obama from a legitimate appointment of a Supreme Court justice, he also prevented Trump from being impeached on the first go round. And he also helped Trump appoint two Supreme Court justices. This guy has done a hell of a lot for Trump. Why has he hated so much? Yeah, so it, it, so like for anyone that really jumped through their support by Trump, they were disgusted and appalled, the majority of them, with Washington, D.C. establishment candidates like Mitch McConnell. And I wouldn't point to the fact that he shut down Barack Obama's appointment to the Supreme Court is a good thing. It set a dangerous precedent where we allow things to go through normal procedure and we saw how that backfired moving forward, uh, you know, even in the Biden administration. So uh, I just, I don't think that was a good thing. I, I didn't disagree with the environment. Uh, you know, not the okay. Supreme Court, but the All right, Matrix, uh, un- unfortunately, you're, you're breaking up real bad on this, and I'm going to have to move it on, but I heard you say that you don't necessarily favor what he did to uh, block Obama because it could support, it could set a precedent, and I agree with that, but you're breaking up pretty bad on my end, at least I don't know what the hell, maybe it's my, my damn it's, helmet or something, but I got to move it on, man. All right, man, have a good oh, one. The, could be, it could be that. All right, appreciate you coming in. Okay, uh, keeping it going.
And by the way, you now somebody said he sounds like he's underwater. I don't know because now make now I actually am. I don't want to take it all because it's cold out here. But you're hearing me through a microphone in the top of my helmet here, and I got ear. There are speakers on the side, so you're actually hearing me through the through this helmet here. Um, most of the time, I don't like Democratic candidate. The Republican is just as bad, so I end up not voting at all. Well, I don't ever advise to not vote at all. Damn. And I don't, I'm not even a big fan of write-ins, but I understand the sentiment. Sometimes the, the choice between two evils is so difficult to make that some people are rather like, I don't want to vote at all. And I, I understand that. I just am not a fan of saying not to vote. Like, um, I think it says, at ET phone home... <laughs> <laughs> it says no vote, no no vote, no voice, and I kind of agree with that. Um, going back to the box, it is by uh, what was it Bionic Man Keith? Welcome back to the program, folks. Tap the screen. A little audience in here, it's a little different. I don't normally uh, come in on the weekends. Who sent me that? March uh, ET phone home. I appreciate that. Thank you for the generosity, Bionic Man. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program again. How's it going, Tim? I, it's going good. What do you think? Is the party hijacked by Donald J? No, because I think that if the Republicans don't rally around somebody else, I mean, you're going to end up with the same exact result. You're going to have to rally around somebody else. What makes anybody think that you're not going to end up with the same exact result? And you need moderates. You need moderates. What, what wins elections is moderates from the Democrats and moderates from the Republican side. But wait a minute, and what if we, what if they but what if the belief is that if we do what we did we're gonna end up with the same results and those results are a Trump victory like in twenty sixteen. Maybe they believe that. But I think what actually won the twenty sixteen election was the same thing that happened in twenty twenty. People didn't like Hillary Clinton. So True. people voted for Donald Trump because he was something different. And what lost Donald Trump in 2020 was people didn't like Donald Trump, so they voted for Biden. It's like True. we're voting for the least of evils. We're going back and forth. So how, how, I think but how well in, in 2024, how well do they like Joe Biden? That's the thing. It's like you're going to need somebody on the Republican ticket that is going to be likable. I mean, let's face it. We all know that it's about optics, right? You're going right. to need somebody on the ticket that like, and I don't know if DeSantis has that optics to actually win. When I well, look at the Republican. Nikki Haley is kind of cute. Well, when I look at it, you know, I mean, let's face it. Let's keep it. Let's. Let's call it what it is. You almost need like a ticket like a Tim Scott and a Nikki Haley running together mm. so that you get the black vote, you get the female wow. vote, you get, you know, you get the Republican vote, you get the moderate votes, you get the independent votes. It's like that's something that you actually might be able to win the ticket. I don't, you know, I don't know at this point, and I hate to say this because it, it definitely makes African Americans almost look like they're racist to some degree, but I don't know if there's anything the Republicans can do, at least in the near future, to get the black vote. Even with Tim Scott and, and Nikki Haley both being people of color, I can't see it. I mean, as white as Biden is, I think he would still get the black vote over Nikki Haley and a Tim Scott ticket. I mean, blacks are just not going to vote Republican to any significance. And for my MAGA folks out there watching, remember the so-called walkaway movement? How did that really turn out? I can't see it, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, you got to do something to, to get the moderates because that's what actually yeah. wins the race. It's not the far you're not going to you're not going to change the far left and the far right. You're never going to change that. The far left is go, like you're going to like the far left is going to vote Democrat. The far right is going to vote Republican every single time. They're going to vote down party lines every single solitary time. Right. Whether they're Satan, they're going to vote it down the party line. <laughs> right. So you and I so both let's, know let's that. Take, 
Let's take your example. The far right is going to vote, you know, Republican every time, which I agree with 100 percent. So when you're talking about getting the African-American vote, that means they have to stand in line besides far right voters. They're not going to do that. And that's the problem is that no matter how moderate a Republican is, because far right people are in that line right along. Those far right people are the ones waving the Confederate flag and all of that stuff. The African American voters are not going to go with those people. Well, I mean, who else are they going to vote for? The le- the guy on the left. I mean, it, it's I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to get the re- like. And I remember back in 2016 how many changes, how many hand changes there were. Like when Herman was like the the leader and it just kept on changing and changing and changing. It seems like from month to month to month, there was like a different leader until it ended up being Donald Trump. Right. You know, if you remember that, it's like, so it's going to be interesting to see who it is. was that the year of Santorum was doing pretty good for a while? And like you mentioned, yeah. Harry Kane. And yep. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Well, I mean, there Trump was like, was, what, 16 different Republicans running for the ticket? Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. and it changed hands, I don't know how many times. So it's going to be interesting to see who actually ends up as the front runner. But and, let me ask you this, because in the gonna, comments... Let me ask you this, because Knucklehead in the comments said the debates will tell a lot. Is there anybody out there on the right that can, can actually would have a legitimate chance of beating Trump in a debate? And the reason I'm asking that is because my issue with Trump in a debate, which I believe makes him very difficult to defeat, is because he doesn't follow the rules. You get out there and start debating the topics, and he'll just say something like, your, mo- your mama's ugly. And the rest of the folks trying to remain a professional, you know, trying to ma- maintain a professional appearance, you can't compete with a guy that is breaking all the rules and using them in a debate. So how could you ever have a debate with Trump and emerge successful? I think that that worked in 2016. I don't know if that'll work again. I really don't. I think yeah, but that even Biden got- told even even. Yeah, it worked in 2016 because Biden even had to go unprofessional and say, won't you shut up, man? Because because Trump was doing it then. He was over talking him and everything. Right. I think that Trump actually wore people down with the Twitter rants, with all of the, you know, like, you know, you got small hands and your wife is this and like all of that stuff that got old. People like that wore people down. And even like the people that voted for him twice, I think that that wore people down and they want somebody new out there. I mean, people do. Is it enough of them, though? Is it an is it enough of them amongst the Republican Party that want someone new? There's a lot of them that want Trump back. Is it enough of them to want something new to actually make it a reality? I and I'm just talking about for the you, Republican nomination. It, well, we're going to see. We're going to see with the debates. The, like you were saying, the, ba- the debates are going to be a telltale sign if somebody can stand up to Trump and put him in his place in a proper way without going down the dirt road. That's going to be hard. All right, last question before I move it on. In the comments... Uh, looks like I uh, can't pronounce that. Some triple seven said we don't want establishment. Everybody that's going up against Trump on the right side of the aisle for the Republican nomination are going to be viewed as establishment candidates. This individual in the comments is saying we don't want establishment people. Who can the Republican Party put up that would be viewed in a positive manner that's not considered an establishment candidate? Yeah, but I mean, at this point, is is Donald Trump not part of the establishment now? Not in their eyes, he's not. He's still not a typical politician to them. I mean, at what point do you become like the establishment? You know, I mean, what? <laughs> I makes agree you with the establishment? you. Yeah. 
I agree with you. I, I've said that before. You can't be a senior in high school talking about I'm not a typical student. Your ass has been all the way to school at this point. So I don't disagree with you, but I just wanted to give it to you from their side of the aisle. They don't see Trump as a typical politician, even though he served an entire term as president. But I'll give you the last word, man. I got to move it on. Well, I mean, I think at this point, also, the January 6th is not over. I don't think that that's over. And I think that how so? How so? Well, I think that we're still going to hear, you know, a lot of this stuff come out during the debates. You know, you're going to get the you're going to get the dirt rising to the surface from a lot is of anybody, stuff. Is candidates. anybody in the? Yeah, but if you're having a, re, a debate among Republicans, is anything that comes out about January 6th, are they even going to believe it? Most of them didn't even watch the January 6th hearings. At this point, amongst the Republican Party, the mind, their minds on January 6th is already made up, I believe. But maybe you think differently. I don't know. I think that people just want change. People are tired of, like, the division. People are tired of this country being divisive. It's just they, they want something different than what it is. I mean, it, I it's been too long of being too divided. I don't disagree with that. All right, Keith, you know what I got to do. Appreciate yep. you coming in here. All right. Take care. Tap the screen. As, as always, folks, uh, as always, tap the screen. Get your boy up to 20,000 likes. Program is and always will remain MAGA friendly. Always give you your chance to state your point. The fact that you may disagree with the host never means a damn thing. So feel free to get your point across without any fear of being banned, blocked, or censored by the host. Looking in the comments, Fox News has created the white ISIS. We see ruling America. Wow, that's a strong comment. Uh, Pozzini, white ISIS. Damn. Ooh, ooh, that hits hard. All right, let me keep it moving. Biden is a total white ISIS. I can't even I can't even move to the next comment that hits so hard. Biden is to Biden is a total failure. Democrats riot, loot, and burn cities. You know something? That's an interesting point writer um, is saying. In regards to Democrats rioting, looting, and burning cities. When we look at the Ukraine-Russia uh, war, many folks point out, well, if Trump was in office, that would not have been happening. Have you noticed that with Biden in office, nobody's rioting and looting and burning cities? That's not happening under Biden's watch. What's going on? Remember the summer of 2020, you know, George Floyd riots, all kinds of stuff was happening. Under Biden's watch, you had five officers uh, kill a guy in Memphis a few, you know, that just came to a head a month or so ago. No one rioted and looted. What's the difference? We, if we're going to point out that Russia would not have went into the Ukraine and mention rioting and looting, we have to address the fact that under Biden's watch, that's not happening. It's not even coming close to what happened under Trump's watch. By the way, folks, if civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle is what you enjoy, follow the program. It helps out the algorithms. I appreciate you folks that are doing that. Nevertheless, it is always and will remain MAGA friendly. Let me keep it going. We'll go straight to uh, Charles. I cannot pronounce it. Dot Dottery? Dory? I can't. Let me. I can't. We'll just let it go. All right. Good afternoon, Charles, and welcome to the program. The five officers did not get away with it. That is true. That is true. And that's one of the things. I don't know if TikTok's going to let my next guest on, but we'll let it keep going. Uh, in the comments, somebody says, is that water behind me? Yes, it is. That is a river. I am riding on the river right now. So I parked the bike, as you can see, and I decided to get out and talk to you fine folks. What did uh, Leonardo DiCaprio say? One day I'm sleeping under a bridge. Next day I'm having a TikTok chat with you fine folks. But um, in regards to... I don't lost the topic I was talking about now. We'll, just, we'll go back to the comments. Stupid Trump comments is fuel. What did I say? Stupid Trump comments is fuel on the fire. If he could shut up. Well, I do believe that if Trump was not as heavy as ducks, there are some ducks out there that apparently do not like MAGA, but if Trump was not as heavy on the Twitter, I do believe he would be enjoying a second term in office. And unfortunately, most MAGA liked what he was doing in terms of the, the tweeting. But let's, let's keep it going. 
Uh, Charles, I don't know what happened, so we'll move it on to Nobody Here. Lee, that's a song, isn't it? Uh, nobody's supposed to be here? All the ducks love Trump. <laughs> I'm being surrounded by these fucking ducks. All right. Oh, geese, geese, you are right. Okay, good afternoon. Who we have here? Nobody here. Okay, Just I don't know guy. what happened, but I, yeah, I can't see you in the box, so something is obviously going weird here. But what do you think? Has Trump hijacked the Republican Party at all? Do you see that? Because many folks are suggesting that. I, I don't see that. I just see the Republican Party candidates showing their collars before they're in the race. <laughs> Elaborate. What do you mean? Give me an example of a Republican candidate. What? We only have Nikki Haley right now. Who's showing their colors? Well, people are talking about DeSantis, right? Right. They so kind of want to see Trump, him. Yeah, but before Trump, was yeah. anybody talking about DeSantis? It was all positive, wasn't it? No. Yeah. But, like, with DeSantis, you know, he's got people like Klaus Schwab, you know, having his back now. He's making bills that people can't talk bad about him without emailing him. You know, what type of stuff is he going to do when he gets power then? You know, if he's You're making stupid... That- you're saying that DeSantis is trying to pass bills that, what you said, that allows folks not to be able to criticize him. Did you say that? Yeah, without them emailing and telling who they are and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know something, I get where you're going. That almost sounds dictatorial. But one of the things I do yeah. like is the notion of accountability on the Internet. Where you Right now on the Internet... Because I run social media pages. You can say some really horrible shit about somebody with a picture of a cat as your profile. If you're going to say something, you should be accountable for what you're saying online. You shouldn't be able to troll unanimously like you can. Because some of the times, you got kids out here who are taking their own lives because of this troll and stuff. And it's being done sometimes by even parents are involved in it. So I do believe that if you're going to post online... There should be some way for the government to know where that post is coming from. Yeah, but isn't that where all their, you know, tech guys come in? Because the government has those. Sometimes. Fancy Prince, thank you for that. Sometimes the tech guys can chase it, you know, track it down through the the IP address and things like that. But you do have voice over internet protocol. Uh, what do they call it? Um virtual private network you do have provide you know your id or something like that and it is attached just like it is to your driver's license so that when you're posting stuff online the authorities can instantly find out who you are i don't think you should be able to do that anonymously because the public has shown they cannot be left to their own devices in that area okay in a way that's that is true but i don't you know i don't hold it against somebody to criticize me you know I don't care how high I am, you know, I can, you know, I don't hold it against somebody to criticize me, you know, I don't care how high I am, you know, I could be president, go ahead and criticize me, you know, yeah, I'll take well, the love, want, I'll take the yeah, hate, yeah, yeah, I'll be president, go ahead and criticize me, you know, yeah, I'll take well, the love, want, I'll take the yeah, hate. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, if you want to say, listen, you know, I, you're, you call yourself the handsome liberal, you're the ugliest guy online, I can deal with that. But when you start talking about causing harm to my family, or it hasn't happened to me, fortunately, but I, there's a lot of folks online that receive death threats and things like that. Like, say, Nancy Pelosi, for instance, or Al Sharpton, or Jesse Jackson. I mean, I'm talking about people who receive millions of death threats annually. You shouldn't be able to do that anonymously. Okay. I mean, that, that is true. So if he's passing the yeah. bill to make it a little bit better than that, then okay, you know, but the way I was, I heard it and everything, he was just making it to where they couldn't criticize him, and that just seemed a little much for me. Like, if he's looking out yeah, for no, everybody, then so be it. Yeah, it should, right. No, it shouldn't be specifically for you. That's, yeah, that starts to make him look like he's Saddam Hussein or Stalin or somebody, like he's a god. Yeah. No, <laughs> not specifically for him, but there should be some type of accountability. They could have it like the uh, Accountability in Posting Act or some shit, whatever name they want to come up with. But if, yeah, if you're online 
posting comments on people's pages. Yeah, they should be able to help hold you accountable for what you posted without having to go to the CIA and go through a thousand servers to find out who you are. It should be simpler yeah. than that. So yes, I, I can see it from that aspect. So you're not a fan yeah. of DeSantis? Uh, not really. No. Mm. Mike <laughs> Pence? Mm, no. Nikki Haley? Mm, is... Who's the Democrat that switched over? That's running Republican. Uh, Tulsi uh, Gabbard. Old... Yeah, <laughs> I like her. Tulsi Gabbard. I like her. Give me somebody else. Give me somebody else. Give me somebody else. I like policy. I like. I like looking at policies and you know what they bring to the table, and what they have. Right. Like I said in the comments, you know, I'm more of a realist. I like seeing what they have done for the people. If let, me you give done you a, for people let me give you a scenario that we don't expect to happen, but let's say Tulsi Gabbard's not in it. Trump gets on television in an orange jumpsuit and says, I can't do this shit. I can't believe it, but pick somebody else. Who would you pick if Trump was not in it and Tulsi didn't run? Who else do you believe would be a good uh, Republican to push this country forward? Oh, I have to go with the probably the first female that would probably be in office. The Republican female running now. Nikki Haley. So you're not yeah. you're not totally close to Nikki Haley then. I'm not totally close, no. I mean, like I said, I'm a realist. I I wanna look into them all the way up till they're out. I'm going to be watching very closely to what's going on there before I make my vote. Let, let but me ask you, do I you seen, see, do you, go ahead. I seen uh, or heard you mention somebody that said they didn't vote. You know, I'm a firm believer, go vote. I, I know there's bad people on each side, but please make your voice heard. You know, that's the only voice we have. <laughs> I, so. I could not agree with you more on that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of... As someone said in the comments, no vote, no voice. And I, yeah, I totally agree with that. So we, we, yeah. we're on... We, that's a bipartisan uh, idea. Yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. But I got to move it on, nobody. Appreciate right. you coming in here. Thank hey, you go for ahead and me. shut it down because I can't... Yes, yeah, go ahead and shut yours down because I can't see it in the box. Something, something weird is going on. So I'll keep it moving, though. Uh, looking in the comment section here, if it allows me to do it here. For some reason, when I tried to bring Chris on, it did, or Charles, it didn't do it right. So Phantom, does that say Phantom of the Moist? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Uh, Phantom of the Moist. Hello. You got to explain. Fan what does that hello, name hello. mean, Phantom of the Moist? <laughs> I am one of the proud uh, constituents of the Make America Moist movement. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I'll fill you in on the details later. I will give you a brochure. <laughs> okay, that's the, you sure I'll have to, you sure I'll have to pay five ninety nine to hear those details? Five ninety nine a minute. All right. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Do you think Trump is hijacking the Republican Party? Well. <laughs> I saw at CPAC, I watched mostly all of it before I drooled off to sleep there. Um, I saw a lot of people, like I saw MTG, once again, she went right up to the election supervisor, um, started spouting that there were thousands of dead people voters, and I didn't see that election supervisor pushing back. I see Lauren Boebert saying she be forced into Christianity, and it's all her views against our views. But her state. Forced? Wait, wait, you, did you say forced into Christianity? Yes. If you watch her speech, she says wow. the spoken word should be the only word that should be going around the United States. It is that word that we should be governed by. If you watch her speech at CPAC. Um, but she has to be dealing I with didn't another see problem. That. Oh yeah, you gotta watch it. It was it was very uh, very scary. Um, but her problem is her state has a water problem that I don't think she has addressed since she was elected. She is on very thin ice, and this is coming not just from a Democrat. This is on both Republicans. She barely won her race, and when it comes to next midterm, I don't think she's gonna pull out another victory. Uh, she's gone. She's toast. Um, so she better be acting for her constituents rather than speaking on Trump won and you know the Democrats are evil. Um, she might want to start reaching across the aisle and stop, you know, going to CPAC and saying that they're, you know, voting fraud and the Democrats. 
So is, is it possible, though, for the Republican Party to really put up anybody else with any chance of success other than Trump for that nomination? I don't know what happened. My caller just dropped. Real quick for some of you folks, particularly my beloved MAGA and my right-wingers that are 2A folks. I'm a big guy. No, no denying. I'm six foot six, 300 pounds. How the hell do you carry concealed without it and, and make it feel comfortable? I know it's off topic, but I'm carrying right now, and it's riding my my jacket is coming up and shit. You have to. Do you have to dress like a Phantom of the Opera tuxedo jacket down to your damn ankles? so that your clothes don't ride up. Now, you can, I, I'm not going to show you anything because obviously TikTok doesn't want that type of stuff seen, but I'm, you know, it comes low enough, but yet when I sit down, that side of me rides up and I'm getting nothing but cold air on my, <laughs> on my side. And I'm not that, I'm not a tiny guy, as you can see, you know, so regular sweater so you can't really see anything this is this is an ass but that's not a that's not a firearm that's an ass for dogs and shit like that but it's on my dominant side but when i sit down it comes up and i'm freezing on that side <laughs> i am freezing my ass off on that side so my dominant side my love handles are turning ice cold um i'm six foot 340 get you a JM4 tactical holster. I have to look at look that up. Uh, game changer. All right. Sticky holster. What is a sticky holster? Do it is do it inside the waistband holster. It is inside the waistband. That is where it's at. And it's still coming up. And I'm still chilling on that side. Fucking around and get frostbite on the love handles. I picked up my kid from preschool, bent over to pick him up, and went home in the phone. Yeah, you know, that's a real good point. I got my own little um, thermos, but I went to Starbucks and poured that, poured their drink into my thermos. And yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of that. When I bend over, I don't want people to see shit because certain people are not a big fan of seeing folks they carry. Even though it's the law, you can do it. Folks see, you know, see the butt of a firearm and they go nuts. So. I'm often worried about that, you know, revealing that you're carrying, which is why I would never advise open carrying. I just would never fucking advise that because even the police are not comfortable. Shit, turn, I'm black, so you know. <laughs> but even for even for somebody, regardless of race, there's even police officers that are not real keen on seeing a citizen walking around with a firearm. So I would I don't know how people open carry, other than maybe in Arizona or Texas somewhere. I would never advise doing that. I just think it's not only that, but then you got to worry about retention because people get other ideas and shit. I mean, there, there's a video floating around right now of an off-duty Chicago police officer, a little female, having to have, having to have had, take, had to take the life of a guy who decided to try to take her firearm off of her. So I'm never a fan of open carry. Because, you, you know, you're standing in line somewhere and somebody behind you decides they want to disarm you. And that leads to a, a lethal encounter. So I'm never a fan of that. Um, you're right, brother. Even in Texas, sometimes open carry is a little sketchy. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. The, the audit, the police guys, let me zip this shit up because it's getting windy out here. The audit, the police guys um, that are on YouTube, oftentimes catching police up for not knowing the law. Some of them walk down the street open carrying. And it's amazing how often the police walk up to them demanding ID, demanding all kinds of shit that they have no right to demand. I mean, open carrying is pretty much just as illegal, just, just as legal as riding down the street on this bike. It, and to some degree, they actually have more of a right to stop me on this bike than they do if you're carrying a firearm. If you're doing nothing wrong, I think they can stop me on this bike legitimately quicker than they can a person that's open carrying but yet they always go to the person that's open carrying and a lot of them have to end up paying a lot of money for messing with the wrong guy that's open carrying i just i'm not a fan i don't want to bring all that kind of drama to myself because you never know what's on the mind of that officer there are officers out there we can we can 
debate race if you want, but there are officers out there that fear the sight of a black man with a gun. Say what you want, but there's some people like that. And if someone has to take, someone takes my life as a six foot six, 300 pound guy, and they can say he had a gun on him, that will carry a lot of weight in defending a police officer. If it's, if it's not on video, and they can show a big ass dude like me that was actually carrying a gun, there are a lot of folks that are gonna say, yeah, it probably was legitimate. So I don't carry, I would never carry open for that reason um, in itself. Anyhow, I just wanted to ask you, cause I know I have a lot of carriers on the site and I need, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need some advice cause <laughs> I'm tired of shit riding up on that side and freezing when it does. Uh, and not only that, but also, because, you know, like I said, I'm a big guy. I got a little something in front of me as well. So I can't do the appendix because it hurts. You know, if you're sitting down and all of a sudden a little bit of gut sitting on the bear, sitting on a, sitting on that uh, the butt of that firearm, before you know it, you got this big-ass indentation in your stomach. I don't see how people carry appendix-wise unless they got a six-pack. Like, if unless you have nothing in the way, how do you carry from an appendix standpoint without especially when you're driving or something like that now if you're walking around yeah you can you can you can tuck it in your waistband in the back or whatever but when you sit down and you driving and that shit is in your appendix how do you how do you make that comfortable get a real bike and get off that e-bike says uh peace stone i do have a um i have a trek i have a regular um hybrid mountain bike and i i do ride that occasionally but this thing does 30 miles an hour. I love it. It's fast. I can get all over where I want to. It's got three and a half inch wide tires. So if I want to ride off road, I'm a 50 year old guy, but I still got a little bit of kid in me, a little bit of adventure in me. I can ride in the snow. I can do anything on this. I can't do all of that on a regular pedal bike. So I like this. Plus, because it is an e-bike, that goes that fast i can cover great distances like i'm 15 miles from my house right now and i can easily make it back on this thing without having to you know work up a serious sweat whereas if i get on a regular bike you're going to pedal your ass off so any bike is cheating to some degree but i'm gonna say what trump would have said back in his 40s cheating can be a lot of fun all right let me go back to the box We'll keep it going with the one and only Doc Sparkle Pony. I wouldn't nice expect holder. anything less from you an e-bike, you dang Democrat, cheating, cheating Democrat. What's up, brother? How you doing? <laughs> what up? What up, Sparkle Pony? So tell me, we're talking about Trump hijacking the Republican Party. Is that the case? Great content, somebody says. Thank you. Trump hijacking the Republican Party. Is that just some liberal bullshit? Fuck no. He did it fucking seven years ago. He hijacked He's the Republican Googling. Party seven years ago. Is Damn right he did. The, is that a good thing for the Republican Party? To be seen. To be seen. Um, I would say that it's actually uh, a good thing for politics. I, you know, I, honestly, you know me. Like, I'm very moderate. Like, and so, you know, party politics to me is just already stupid. So it doesn't matter to me either way. But uh, for the Republican Party itself to be seen, um, I think it is going to be good for the Republican party though in the end to be honest with you and that's just my opinion i think how, so? did, how, how do you believe trump hijacking the republican party in your opinion would be good for the republican party because he got rid of families of politics in the republican party he destroyed he got rid of what wait, wait you said he got families rid of families of politics in the republican party he destroyed them he destroyed the Bush. so there was no so what are the chances that trump would have served two terms and put either don jr or his daughter in there well, no, 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 hold on. But see, he wasn't a part. He wasn't a family of politics to begin with. I'm talking about the Bushes, the Cheneys, people that had like, you know, a reputation for being in politics yeah, for I, a I long get your, time. I get your, and I understand I what you're your, saying. And I'm not yeah, saying that he would. I'm not. I'm not saying he wouldn't have done that. Um, first of all, I think he's too big of an egomaniac to even let his son, you know, be the president. Like I think he would want to be at first, but. Um, I, I think what he did that changed the Republican Party is Jeb Bush is gone. Like that dude is literally probably living in a hobbit hole right now. And he did that by himself. Like, and so like, 
I mean, he he did, and he, he messed up the chain. And so the one thing that I would say that he did for the Republican Party um, is he put people on notice, like on, in the Republican Party. And I don't know, I don't know he, that, explain that. Explain. even Reagan didn't do that. Ex- explain what do you mean by he put people on notice? Well, not explain that. Okay, so. Uh, and I've always said this, and I know this is against the uh, Democrat, but it could be said for any uh, any party politi- politician, doesn't matter. But the, the reason why uh, Trump won the election was it was one uh, debate, and it was against Hillary Clinton when she said, well, you know, you cheat on your taxes, and he said, you gosh darn right I do, and so do you, and I'll tell everyone how I do it. And, like, he finally said to the people, like, yeah, I'll fucking tell you exactly how these people and like he put people on notice in the Republican Party that you know I am not uh, I am not going to be like this typical you know person that you know runs in the Republican Party. I'm going to be different, and whether it's good or bad, yeah, everyone can have their you know disagreements. I don't care. I've never voted for the man, by the way, guys. I don't like him, but I like you know I do. Why don't you like him? Why don't you? You're explaining them, but why don't so you have a good explanation of them. Why don't you like Trump? I just think that he's an egomaniac, and I think that if he would have just shut his fucking mouth and just been a politician after he won, then he would have won again. But uh, he did so. Well, I just think that I think that he's too much of an egomaniac. Okay, fair enough. But what about the notion that pay attention to what he because you hear this from MAGA a lot. You hear this from Trump supporters. Pay attention to what he does, and they believe what he did was great for the country. Ignore the rhetoric and pay attention to what he does. You don't buy into that. To an extent, I think he destroyed a lot of families in politics. I think he actually did it on the other yeah. side too. I think the Clintons are gone now because of them. I think um, I think the Pelosi's are done now. I mean, I think I think you know, no, the Brian is eighty years old. The Brian well, you know what? Well, you know anyway. what? You know what? I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, we'll see. But anyway, I you know I think that uh, Mitch McConnell is just having a hard time right now. I think no, he's that, not. No, uh, he's not. Uh, we'll see. They immediately put him as the Senate minority leader, despite how I Trump understand that he's the minority leader, but he's getting pushed down. All of a sudden, guess who we put as the House? Uh, McCarthy? Who the fuck is that guy? Like, you know, there, there's these people that are coming into politics now and taking over that, you know, weren't, weren't before. And new blood, new era. And I think what Trump did, a, a, out of all of his faults, uh, the one thing that I will give him the benefit of the doubt for is that he changed families of politics and who owns what territory and what ground forever and he did it forever and what about um, them but what about the marjorie taylor greens that's new blood do you think she's good for the republican party can i can i uh grab pool noodles and wish for the great flood if that person gets in charge wait wait (laughs) say that again can i grab my pool noodles and wish for the great flood if that person gets in charge (laughs) yeah no uh -uh. uh-uh no (laughs) I right, just because just because I lean a little bit right, like I'm moderate right, doesn't mean that I'm I'm freaking stupid, like and I'm nuts. Yeah. Like, um, no, that person that person needs to uh, find her way. All to right, then, well. then we're we're kind of on the same bar. I mean, Carrie Lake, who did not make it as Arizona governor, she's also a big Trump supporter. I'm assuming you put her in the same category. I would, yeah. And you asked earlier right. who would be the who would be the Republican candidate that that I would put forth. Uh, I would all like you guys to go look at uh, State Congressman Brian Mass. That dude is a badass, and he's a Republican. He is a veteran. He what lost state? both his legs. Florida. What state? In Florida. Florida. He lost both his legs in combat, and that dude is a badass. And I, I, what, as about much as, what about DeSantis? What about DeSantis? Oh, my God. Uh, see the problem with this thing. How, let, let me let me interrupt you and ask you this, and I'll ask folks in the comments as well. If you had it went back a year ago, the polling among Republicans and those who lean right for the Senate would have been through the roof. Why has it fallen so far? What has he done in in the in the last year that has made his polling fall so low among folks on the right? Uh, I don't. I think it's the fact that he won't stand up against Trump. Uh, I think it's the fact that he really won't. And, like, he said he would, but then he doesn't. And, like, I think he's shown a little bit of his cards there. I think he's kind of playing to daddy, if you will. Sorry to say it that way, but that's just kind of what he does. 
and I don't think he's even going to try in a chance of hell to run against that guy. Um, really? First of all, no, first of all, it would be dumb, in my opinion. Right out your six years, because even if Trump wins uh, or loses or whatever, uh, that's the next election cycle for you to, to run for president. And if he does win, um, he only gets one term, so he gets to run right wow. after. Wow. And I would not run as a vice with him. That would be dumb. Here, here's my liberal opinion on it. I think DeSantis' only flaw is he ran afoul of President Trump. Once Trump started attacking that guy, it, just like you mentioned, the, the Bushes, you mentioned Pelosi, you mentioned uh, folks who have been around, they're destroyed from President Trump. I believe that President Trump has now come out of the opposite side of DeSantis, and that literally is like flipping over an hourglass. His days are numbered just because Trump, if Trump was endorsing DeSantis, like say for instance, Trump said, I don't want no more to do with this shit, but I think DeSantis would be the next guy going forward. I believe most folks on the right would be right in line behind DeSantis, but because Trump has started attacking that guy, He's already starting to disintegrate and fall apart like wet paper. I believe this. And, that, and I agree with you. And I and I think that's his big fault is that no one wants a leader that does that kind of stuff. No one wants a leader that backs down to that kind of stuff. They want a leader that will stand on their two feet and do what you know, do what's necessary to not only provide you know their integrity to the public, but also to you know show their leadership and their presence to the public. And wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be Liz Cheney? She stood up to Trump. How, oh, Jesus Christ. Well, she didn't even win her primary, so I think that's probably <laughs> right. a pretty bad example. That's right. a pretty bad example. But, okay, well, Liz Cheney's a bad example because she came from a family that sucks, okay? The Santis isn't in the same boat. Oh, the Cheneys suck, and anyone that says anything otherwise is ridiculous. Mitt Romney. But, Mitt Romney. Uh, you know, I actually used to like the guy, but at this point, like, I just don't know. And he's so wishy-washy. I, you know, Mitt John Romney. McCain. John, John McCain. McCain. John McCain I would have voted for back in the day, but, I mean, obviously, you know, no more. Um, yeah, but, but, Doc, Doc, all of these people have the same thing in common. They were heroes until Trump started attacking them, and now they're garbage. Folks need to realize Trump has... That's who? Says, says who they were heroes. Says Tucker Carlson. Even Tucker Carlson says. All right. Well, I don't like Tucker Carlson, so f that dude. <laughs> no, I mean, like, no, that's not a, that's not a good source. I don't. I know. Sorry. All right. Okay. I, I, would All right that, I would say that I would say that there are a few heroes. I would say that John McCain was a hero, and I say that you know. There are a few others, but uh, I don't know about everyone. Like you know, not all. How do, get, let me let me ask you this before I move it on. How does Trump get away? If you believe McCain was a hero, how does Trump get away with saying my heroes don't get captured? A direct dig on him being an MI, uh, uh, a K, what well, was it, not a KIA, but uh, missing in action or captured or whatever the hell. POW. How does Trump get away with criticizing a POW like that when a a guy taking a knee during the anthem is public enemy number one. How did he get away with that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say this. I would say that it, he was very easily able to deflect, you know, very quickly. To something. How can you deflect from an open criticism of all POWs? Well, so that's the thing, though, is that, you know, his, his voter base and, you know, I'm not saying I was part of it, but like, I, you know, his voter base is very, they aren't as critical of him as they are of other people. And, like, you know, he's able to deflect it very quickly by, you know, pushing a different narrative very quickly. And you know what? And that's, that's just kind of how it worked. And I'll say this. I was not happy about that because I'm a Purple Heart cap. And trust me, fuck that. Fuck that. Don't you dare yeah. disrespect my, my veterans. So, yeah, I think, I think John McCain was a POW in the middle of Fifth Avenue. And he got away with it. But I got to move it on, man. I mean, you know me, man. I'll always be back. I'll always be hanging out with you. Make sure that you get that uh that one stick or whatever it is that you got on your side, you know, taken care of. I gotta go. I gotta go. Catch you later. All right, looking in the comments here. Appreciate you folks that are riding with your boy out here on this chilly late uh winter day. Um and by the way, tap the screen, get your boy up to thirty thousand likes. Uh this is always 
always will be MAGA friendly. MAGA are my preferred guests. No banning, no blocking, no censorship. You know what we do here. Love you, man, says Mr. Johnny uh, Stearns. Appreciate that. Definitely an honor. Appreciate you said it. You can't say Black Lives Matter after voting for Joe. Trigger. Elaborate on that. I'd love to talk to that. Um, how You cannot say Black Lives Matter after voting for Joe Biden. I would love to hear you explain that. Uh, Trump is a patriot. Always has been. He's thankful for the wealth this country allowed him to make. You can be thankful for the wealth the country allows you to make while not being a patriot. You can; Those two things are not necessarily linked together. Because um, how many liberals do folks on the right believe are unpatriotic? Let's say Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during the anthem. Most folks on the right do not see him as patriotic, yet he has made a ton of wealth from this country playing football. Nike contracts, advertising, he's made plenty of money and folks on the right do not believe he's a patriot. So making wealth from this country and being a patriot are not necessarily uh, along the lines with each other. Uh, and by the way, if this is what you like, civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle, I always encourage folks to follow the program, helps out the algorithms. Generally, Monday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Central is when we do this with a host of MAGA and liberals alike. Going back to the box, we'll keep it moving with uh, who's in here. We'll, we'll go with Chef Nicholas. Oh, better yet, oh, shit, I tapped it already. We'll go ahead. I seen Trucker do it in there. I have not watched the NFL since the kneeling during the anthem and will not do so again. Wow, so they've lost a permanent fan there. Um, Chef, good afternoon. Chef Nick. Hey, how's it going today? Sounds a little It's crazy. going good. It's going good. We, we're asking the notion, the possibility that Trump has hijacked the Republican Party. Do you see any possibility of that actually having taken place? I honestly don't see the evidence of him hijacking. I think that he was just around at the right time and the right place. So, do you believe because in modern you, day... So, if you okay, really so, think about the present time in which he was running, there was the thing about um, uh, President Obama's birth certificate. You had the uh, Hillary Clinton emails, the Benghazi scandal. I don't feel like he hijacked the Republican Party. Well, let me, let me explain like, to you... Let me explain to you what I mean when I say hijack. Hijack means that the typical traditional way Republicans may have believed, may have voted, may have spoken, now has to first be approved by President Trump. Meaning that if you are a traditional Republican, but you do not like something that President Trump says or legislation he tries to pass, and you are openly critical of President Trump, despite being a well-respected Republican member, all of that can be tossed aside simply for being critical of President Trump. I'm asking that question, that if you are a traditional Republican, can you criticize President Trump and still remain a favorite within the party? Well, you can criticize anybody in any party that you're affiliated with. But like, when you get kicked out of the party... They, I'm a Democrat, and I don't like Joe Biden. I can voice my opinion. We do right. have the freedom to do that. But that's not what I'm asking. And if I'm a Republican and I feel a certain way about Donald Trump, I can voice that opinion as well. But no, I don't feel that um, Donald Trump has hijacked the Republican Party. I feel like he was something that we needed at the present time. Well, let me, let me rephrase it. If you are a Republican and you criticize President Trump, will you still be respected by Republicans? You will be respected by a percentage of Republicans, but there's going to be the other percentage that are the pro-MAGA... Uh, government is out to get a as well. 
So what you're saying that is all you need to do is criticize President Trump and you are going to lose a percentage of that party support. In a nutshell, yeah. yeah. It, does that apply to any other other any other candidate? Like for instance, there's a host of folks right now, even on this live, that are criticizing Ron DeSantis. Do folks view them the same way if those same folks criticize Trump? Would they be treated the same way that they are for criticizing Ron DeSantis? My person, you're going to get more hate from somebody if you support Donald Trump rather than Ron DeSantis. Okay, I repeat that. You were breaking up. You breaking up. Repeat be, that. I believe that if you were to support Ron just okay, unfortunately, unfortunately, I got a yeah. You you breaking up? So I hate to I hate to ever have to drop a guest, but unfortunately, Chef, uh, you were breaking up so much that I had to move it on because your your comment was illegible. I wanted to hear your comment. You're always welcome back on the program, but you were breaking up so much that I could not make out what you were saying there. Um, Ron, appreciate the Shamrock. And I want to give my spiel in regards to that Shamrock. It brings up something always. Anytime we talk about racial issues, you talk about the Irish slaves. Why do they celebrate St. Patrick's Day more than their own Irish history? Never could get that. Um, Grace says it's because you're outside. It could be. It could be. Trump is an ass, says RDMC. Elaborate and ask how. I am voting Democrat the same way. Okay. Obama was the Antichrist. What is the definition of the Antichrist? Because I know if you watched Fox News during the Obama campaign, 2007, 2008, they were always in his church, Reverend White, Reverend Wright a large Baptist church on the Chicago South Side I am quite familiar with. It's a Baptist Christian church. And they were holding President Obama accountable for what that pastor was saying. Remember the chickens are coming home to roost and things like that. So Antichrist, explain that. F. Trump says unique made. I think that's simple enough. That sounds like the FJB, but in this case it's F. D. J. T. Uh, I don't like what he thinks or says. You can't even tell Biden is seen now. <laughs> you know something? I will say this in regards to the notion that Biden has to mention. Oh, Biden doesn't know where he's at. He can't put together two sentences. Have you seen when he is live having debates and things like that? How on point he is? Did you see him during the State of the Union address where he got Republicans to admit that they were taking uh moving Social Security off the table? Did you see him walking down the streets with President Zelensky in the Ukraine? He didn't come across as having dementia at all. I will admit that Biden stumbles words. There are plenty of Biden gaffes, particularly if you're looking for those. But the guy, when he's out there speaking and criticizing folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene the other day, when he said, ain't she something special or whatever, that guy is well within his faculties. If President Biden went to a bank to take out a loan or to buy a, you know, a shopping mall or an apartment complex, I don't think there's any bank, any bank manager at all that would say, no, this guy is not in his mind. I can't make a loan or a contract with this guy. That dude is within his family. He stutters and things like that, but for a for guy his age, I think that guy is within his family. I know folks have a different opinion of that, and I'm fine with that, but yeah, I, I don't hear too many Republican senators, Republican Congress people that have access to President Biden claiming that he doesn't know what he's talking about. The folks who are diagnosing Biden to have dementia or be senile are people that have no access to him, but the Republicans that do have access to him, they're not saying that. They're, they're not saying that we need to invoke Article 25 or whatever the hell it is, 28 or, or whatever it is, 25th Amendment, whatever it is, when you remove a president for being incompetent. None of them are saying that. They're criticizing his policies. They have a right, you know, rightfully so. There's a reason to criticize his policies if you lean right. But they're not saying that that guy is mentally incompetent. 
they're just not saying it. Uh, looking in the comments here, Amber keeps saying you are her dad. Who the hell is Amber? <laughs> Biden is the first president to try and shake hands with a ghost. Yeah, and Trump is the first president to literally hug a flag. People do some crazy shit. Um, we embrace. What does this is says? We embrace the probable. We need to embrace the probable truths. Well, what are the probable truths? And ex Barbie says he says shit that doesn't make sense. He has done that before, but then again, President Trump talked about Civil War soldiers defending airports, hundred years before the invention of the airplane. They all do things like that. I said, I don't think that st starts or stops with Biden. They removed the thumbs, what is it? They removed the thumbs down dislike count on all media because no one likes Joe. You think that was done strictly because of Joe Biden? No. The fact is, Trump pushed the big lie. Even Fox News said they did not believe the big lie. Yeah, there's there's no and I want to ask you folks, that's an interesting comment. Um how many of you folks still view Fox News the same? Now, I understand that a lot of MAGA was already going afoul of Fox News before this whole scandal came out because Trump has a problem with Fox News. And that's even what Tucker Carlson apparently said behind closed doors is that Trump could easily destroy us if he wanted to. Alluding to what I have talked to previous callers about today, and that is anybody that gets on the wrong side of Trump, that is a Republican has their day's number, including the networks. Fox News, the biggest name in news as they call themselves, certainly a Republican ally for at least 20 years. The minute Trump started criticizing that network, they're having problems now. That would apply to, as my other comment uh, um, caller, Doc Spargopony talked about, families, the Jeb Bushes, folks on the right that have been, the Cheneys that have been in right-wing politics Respected right-wing political commentators and politicians that have been woefully respected by the Republican Party for generations. The minute they run afoul of Trump, their entire careers are disappearing. He's a powerful guy. And coming from a liberal, I have no problem admitting he is a powerful guy. He can take down whoever that is on the Republican side. Now, liberals is a different story because liberals have a different mindset of Trump. But among Republicans... I don't know of any single Republican that could withstand a barrage of attacks from Trump. Not one. Look at what happened into DeSantis. I brought that up a minute ago. The poll numbers for DeSantis were sky high a year ago. Look at what he just did in Florida during the midterms. The whole damn state was woefully endorsing DeSantis. The minute Trump started calling that guy Ron DeSanctimonious and saying he's disloyal and things like that, Already, most Republican voters are like, I don't know about DeSantis. That's all it took. That is, he didn't pass any new laws, no new legislation. He didn't do anything but get criticized by Trump. And they already are like, I don't know. I mean, I got people in the comments like, you know, he's secretly a rhino. He didn't do shit wrong. <laughs> he didn't do anything. There is no difference from... The DeSantis of today in March is no different than the DeSantis of March 2022. He didn't do anything but get attacked by Trump. And now all of a sudden, I don't know. I don't know if we can trust that DeSantis guy. Shout out to Trump. Ain't nobody else that fucking powerful. Shout out to the man. Even though I'm on the left, I got to give a shout out to somebody who is that powerful that can convince a hardened mind just from a tweet or an attack. Anyhow, folks, I am freezing. <laughs> so I do kind of end the live. Appreciate you rolling with your boy. In fact, you guys are rolling with your boy out here. I got to ride my bike back about 15 miles. And it can't be no more than 35 degrees out. So I'm getting kind of cold. Um, Trump is extremely dangerous to stand united for you. Yeah, if you got that kind of power. Uh, Trigger says, I don't trust any crooked lawyer politician. Okay, okay, fair enough. Jim Crow was a Biden law. Terry Ships, I think, 
just really quick to elaborate on that. You guys can get your boy up. You can see your boy out with 35,000 likes if you tap the screen. I would appreciate that. In regards to Jim Crow being a Biden law or, you know, vote for me or you ain't black or Biden being racist toward African Americans and things like that. Is there some validity to Biden being racist in the past? I believe there is. In fact, Biden himself has admitted um, he's said racially suspicious shit constantly. Biden has been constantly apologizing for things he said that have run afoul of the African-American community. The difference between Biden and Trump is when we call Biden out on saying some racist shit, he apologizes. Trump comes back with fuck your feelings. I didn't say nothing wrong. So I will tell you starting out an apology, even if the apology is not necessarily sincere, an apology is going to beat fuck your feelings 100% of the time. Just understand that first. Next, in regards to Trump being the guy who's done more for blacks and Biden being the one that's racist and all of that. In my, my humble opinion, trying to be fair on both sides, I think the jury is done on that. I, I don't think there's anything you're going to be able to do to convince the majority of African Americans that Trump loves them and Biden hates them. I, I just think that that ship has sailed. You can bring up Senator Byrd and you know Biden eulogizing his funeral. Now, let me say something real quick on that. That is disingenuous. Now, Senator Byrd was a member of the KKK. He was friends with President Biden towards the end of his life. You hear that all the time. Biden was at his funeral and things like that. There are even pictures of them riding in a car together. What you do not hear is the fact that Senator Byrd denounced his racist past, made up with the NAACP, and when he passed away, not only was Biden at his funeral, Obama and Jesse Jackson were there too. So clearly Senator Byrd had made up with African, the African-American community, but you don't hear any of that part. All of the African-Americans that were now working with Senator Byrd are taken out of the picture and you just hear Biden and his racist past. So I just want to point that out that there is more to that story. But in, in reality, I'm just going to say that I don't know what you could do in modern times to convince the majority of African-Americans that Biden is more racist than Trump. I know about the HBCU story. I know about the fact that Trump talked with the Kardashians and folks to come up with some type of prison reform that never took off, but he did entertain discussing it. But I think the ship has sailed. I don't, I mean, whether it's right or wrong, we can debate that on a different live stream, but I don't think there's anything Trump could do for the rest of his life to get the African-American vote. I'm not, I'm not here to say that maybe he doesn't deserve it for doing this or doing that. There may be legitimate reasons you can come up with, but I don't believe there's anything that man could do to get the African-American vote. And I do remember the walk away movement. I understand the videos you folks may place, may show from the Hodge twins or Diamond and Silk or Larry Elder or Candace Owens. But in reality, Trump will probably never come anywhere near 50% of the African-American vote. The majority of African-Americans will vote Democrat for the rest of Trump's life. I, I just strongly believe that. Now, and I see in the comments a comment that's spot on. This is spot on, and this is exactly why that is the case. SG underscore five. In regards to what I'm saying about the African Americans are very unlikely to ever vote for, for the Republican Party. Four words. He stated four words in the comments. And I believe these words are as honest as they ever could be. We do not care. And I believe that. Most Republicans do not care if African Americans support the party. It's only, what do we represent, 13, 13 to 15 percent of the country. I do strongly believe what he said is the actual truth. The Republicans do not care if they get the black vote or not. They don't necessarily even promote themselves or their policies to the African-American community. I believe that. And that's why you will continue seeing that vote go to the other side of the aisle. I mean, you're pretty much telling the voters, I don't care if you vote for me or not. Well. Then what do you think is going to happen come election time? You'll keep calling them sheep. 
keep calling them stupid, keep calling them folks that want free shit or whatever. You fill in the blanks of why you believe African Americans keep voting liberal as opposed to Republican. But I think his statement is probably the truest you will ever hear. They do not care. They do not pursue the African American vote. And that has its consequences. If you, It's like in sales, the sales you do not pursue are the sales you do not get. As a politician, your job is to sell yourself. Anybody you do not try to sell to are probably not gonna buy your product. Maybe you'll have occasionally the Candace Owens types, and I will submit to you that most African Americans that vote Republican, they vote Republican because they did their homework and determined that the Republican Party best fits whatever it is in their life they want to vote for. They went out and found the Republican Party. The Republican Party did not come to them. Candace Owens was not... The, the Republican Party didn't come to Candace Owens. She went out and found them. So same thing with Tim Scott, Larry Elder, and all of those folks. They went out and found the party. And that's not how it's supposed to be. The party is supposed to come talk to you, shake hands, kiss babies, press the flesh. You, you, you're not supposed to have to go out and find the candidate. The candidates are supposed to come sell themselves to you. That's why the Republican Party gets so few African American votes. It's because they're dependent on us to find them. And that's kind of doing it backwards. Even if what the Republican Party stands for resonates with a hell of a lot of black folks, a hell of a lot of Hispanics. That's true. They're Christian. A lot of us, some of us are pro-police, pro-military, pro-country. But the Politicians are supposed to come find us, not the other way around. And the Republican Party doesn't do that. As my boy said, we don't care if you vote for us or not. That's what happens. Anyhow, as always, I do got to step away and get back on this e-bike here and do about 15 miles to warm myself up. About 40 degrees out here. Appreciate you folks rolling. Uh, Jay Tyre says Republicans are racist. That's not true. They are not. I don't think all Republicans are racist. Um, is there a racist element among the Republican Party? Yeah. But then again, there's one among the Democratic Party, too. There are plenty of African Americans that say racist shit about white people. But I, I get the point you're trying to make. I'm not dispelling your point. If you don't vote for him, you, then you ain't black, says Bernie. Like I said before, I don't think there. That ain't enough to get rid of Biden. I'm going to say this. In Trump fashion, because African Americans dislike Trump so much, I believe Biden could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and still get more votes from African Americans than Trump. That's how much African Americans do not like Trump. I don't think there's, you can talk about the Biden economy, you can talk about vote for me, you ain't black, you can talk about Senator Burr. None of that is ever going to make African Americans go over to Trump as opposed to Biden. I do believe that as long as Trump is on the Republican ticket, Biden's going to beat him. I don't. I, I would say something that's all. This is going to be insulting, particularly to my MAGA folks. And I'm not trying to insult you. I'm giving you my honest opinion. I think a dog wearing blue would get more black folks than Trump. It, literally anything that is on the other side would get more votes than Trump from the African-American community. It sounds awful, I get it. I'm just giving you my humble opinion as I always do. I mean, I'm, and I'm not just giving it to you from a liberal perspective, but I believe that in regards to President Trump, there's nothing he can do for the rest of his life to get the majority of the black vote. Anyhow, folks, I got to step away and warm my ass up. I'll catch you guys later. It's your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal. See ya.